Hi everyone, so welcome to one more fantastic 5 MCQs discussion for NEET PG or FMG. I'm going to start with the first MCQ. A patient presented with hyperkalemia. Which of the following drug decrease serum potassium levels can decrease? So option A, glucagon. Option B, epinephrine. Option C, atropin. And option D, lactic acid. So if you're telling epinephrine, then you are right. Epinephrine is also called as adrenaline. So remember, adrenaline acts on the receptor called beta 2. And when you activate beta 2, the beta 2 receptor will push potassium into the cell. So if they push potassium into the cell, the patient will have hypokalemia. So the drug which can decrease potassium in the blood is epinephrine or adrenaline. But we don't use to treat hyperkalemia. So what we use to treat hyperkalemia is salbutamol, which is a beta 2 agonist, which is used to manage hyperkalemia. So what we understand now in this MCQ is drugs used in management of hyperkalemia. First of all, the drug is salbutamol. I just now told you. How can we give it? Either by nebulization or by intravenous, we can give it. Second option we use is insulin. So insulin also causes hypokalemia. So we can use it in the management of hyperkalemia. But if we give insulin alone, it can lead to hypoglycemia. So we add glucose to avoid hypoglycemic episode. Usually these two will suffice. But if there is ECG changes, then there is addition of calcium gluconate. Calcium gluconate is given if there are ECG changes seen with hyperkalemia because it will stabilize the heart calcium gluconate sometimes the hyperkalemia can be chronic and be made due to acidosis so if there is acidosis treat the acidosis by giving sodium bicarbonate sometimes we can also use potassium binding resins like patiromer sodium polystyrene sulfonate they bind potassium in the GIT and that's why they prevent the absorption of potassium into the system circulation so there was a question asked in one of the FMG or NEED PG exam. Can we use magnesium sulfate for managing hyperkalemia? Yes or no? You tell me in the comment section. Many times you may not answer. So let me tell you it is not used to manage hyperkalemia, magnesium sulfate. So coming back, the answer for this question is B. Adrenaline can decrease potassium levels. But we don't use it for treatment. We use salbutamol, which is specific for beta 2. Then moving on to the second MCQ. Patient was in emergency with imipramine overdose. What is imipramine? It's a tricyclic antidepressant. And it is used for major depression and to manage some anxiety problem. And also it is used in nocturnal enuresis in children as adjunct treatment. These changes showed broad QRS complex and right axis deviation. What is the treatment of imipramine overdose? So I told you antidotes are very very important. Yes, what is the answer? The answer is sodium bicarbonate is the treatment for that. Why? We will discuss later. Now physostigmine is the antidote for atropine overdose. Lignocaine is a local anesthetic. And diazepam is a benzodiazepine. It's a benzodiazepine. Now, why is sodium bicarbonate is used? Let us tell. Tricyclic antidepressant, they inhibit SPI-ST reuptake, they inhibit nor reuptake, so they increase the levels of these two. But they also block histamine causing sedation, they also block alpha leading to hypotension. But another problem is they also block muscarinic receptor, and that will cause atropine like action like dry mouth blurring of vision constipation mm -hmm. urine retention and everything but in heart it will lead to tachycardia that tachycardia can go for QT prolongation and arrhythmias can happen so remember TCA overdose similar atropine can cause three C's that is convulsions can happen patient may have coma episodes Okay, and uh, cardiac arrhythmias can happen. 
cardiac arrhythmias can happen now tca itself is sodium channel blocker at high dose it's like class 1 antiarrhythmics so the treatment for this overdose is sodium bicarbonate so if we give sodium bicarbonate two things will happen this sodium channel blockade caused by tcs can be overcome and we can prevent the arrhythmias second it can manage the acidosis which is seen in overdose that's why sodium bicarbonate is used now one more question is suppose a person is having angle closure glaucoma so can we use tca suppose a patient has angle closure glaucoma and he is having depression the question is can we prescribe tca tell me yes or no okay so coming back the treatment for tca overdose is sodium bicarbonate and it can cause three c's convulsions coma and cardiac arrhythmias and how do i prevent arrhythmia by using sodium bicarbonate how do i treat convulsions or seizures by giving benzodiazepine like lorazepam or diazepam can be given okay moving back to the third mcq a pregnant female remember when they give female check pregnancy urinary tract infection took antimicrobials for the same the baby of the female developed cartilage damage and arthropathy what is the likely mechanism of action of antimicrobial consumed by pregnant female so pregnant has taken baby has cartilage damage so teratogenic effect so there are three teratogenic antibacterial drugs fluoroquinolones amylcoside and tetracyclines that fluoroquinolones causes cartilage damage and arthropathy so they are asking the mechanism of fluoroquinolones and what is the mechanism can you tell me they are dna gyrase inhibitor option c so in gram negative they inhibit dna gyrase in gram positive they inhibit dna topoisomerase 4 dna topoisomerase 4 so the answer is c Folic acid synthesis inhibitor, they are our favorite sulfonamides. A drug used in leprosy called Dapsone. A drug used in PB, second line PAS, para amino salicylate, PAS. Mycolic acid synthesis inhibitor is isoniazid, a drug used in tuberculosis. Protein synthesis inhibitor, we have plenty. Let me give the drugs attached to 30 years. The mnemonic is team. PE for tetracycline, AM for amylcoside, 50 years. We have the MCQ drug, macrolide, clindamycin, quinpristine, dalfapristin. Then we have chloramphenicol, chloramphenicol, and a drug called linazolide. So they inhibit protein synthesis in bacteria. But what other things we need to learn from this? Which are safer antibacterial in pregnancy? Remember the mnemonic PCM. P for penicillin and C for cephalosporins and M for macrolide like azithromycin, erythromycin, they are safe, which are not at all given, teratogenic risk, the mnemonic is fat, fluoroquinolones cause cartilage damage, AGs means aminoglycoside, ototoxicity, tetracyclines, they cause bone and teeth damage. Now, another drug which can displace bilirubin, particularly if you give in third trimester, and that can increase the bilirubin level in the newborn, they are sulfonamides. They are not teratogenic, but they can lead to carnicterus in the newborn if you give them in pregnant women, particularly in third trimester. So, coming back to the question, see how the question has been framed. They are given the adverse effect then you should guess the drug then you should write the mechanism of action so that's why sometimes you need in-depth reading for these things let us quickly move on to the fourth question the patient was started on anti-tb drug he presented with tingling and numbness and other features of peripheral neuropathy what should be the treatment so anti-tb drugs first line hrzd in that h isoniazid can cause peripheral neuropathy now what we do is for that treatment we use B6. B6 stands for pyridoxin. It is the pyridoxin we give. 
Nevertheless, what is also given in TB is linozolid. Linozolid is also used for drug resistant TB, and that can also lead to peripheral neuropathy. And how do we manage that? For that, also we use pyridoxine. Vitamin B1 is thiamine. Now, thiamine is used in alcohol withdrawal patient, particularly having vernicase case or astrocytosis. Coming to B12, B12 we give it in megaloblastic anemia. Megaloblastic anemia. Not only that, we use it in neuropathy conditions, particularly diabetic neuropathy. B9 is nothing but folic acid, which we can also use for megaloblastic anemia. Now coming to some special point about anti-B drugs. Guess that drug which cause red-green blindness. Yes, remember the name is ethambutol. So remember I here, ethambutol for eye problems. Coming to hepatotoxicity, HRZ, all are hepatotoxic. The maximum is pyrazinamide Z, then isoniazid, then rifampicin. Nowadays, even the bedaquiline is hepatotoxic when we use it in tuberculosis. Orange red discolation of secretion, remember red for the drug rifampicin. Joint pain. Why joint pain? Due to increase in uric acid. Remember pain for pyrazinamide. Pyrazinamide. And then hypothyroidism by PAS, paraminous salicylate and ethionamide drug. Ethionamide. Then psychosis and seizures can be seen with psychserine that is called cycloserine and INH isoniazid. So these are all high link points, please note down. Now which anti-TB drug can cause QT prolongation? Yes, the name is Bedaquilin. A new drug for tuberculosis. Then Pritomanid, Delamanid, they also can cause QT prolongation. Now what is absolutely contraindicated in pregnant women? Repeatedly tested is aminoglycoside. Streptomycin, gentam, sorry, streptomycin, amicacin, canamycin, capriamycin. What is the enzyme inducer which can lead to contraceptive failure? The name is rifampicin. So that is about anti-TB drugs and most important point. Coming back, the treatment of peripheral neuropathy by isoniazid can be managed with pyridoxine that is B6. Coming to the next question, the last one, fifth MCQ. Antiepileptic of choice for hips arrhythmia. Hips arrhythmia, also called as infantile spasm, the drug of choice is ACTH. Now let us understand some of the drug of choices from here. Seizures and drug of choice for all this, GTCS, JME, myoclonic, absence seizure, the drug of choice is Valproate. If Valproate is not there, then we can give Zamotrigin. Then coming to childhood absence seizure, this one is frequently asked by many students as a doubt. See, agar bachcha mein hota hai, childhood mein hota hai, then the best one is ethosuximide. If they are not mentioned child, just uh, they have asked absence seizure, then you can go for valproate. Otherwise, ethosuximide inside. Focal or partial seizure, we use carpamazepin. If not there, we use lamotrigin. CBZ means carbapazepin. Pain while achieving in facial nerve distribution area is trigeminal neuralgia. The drug of choice is carbamazepin. Febrile seizure, yes, can you guess? It is intranasal midazolam. Intranasal midazolam. If that is not working, then can go for, I mean, if it is not available, then you can go for rectal diazepam then infantile spasm also called as West syndrome or hip arrhythmia it is ACTH infantile spasm with tuberosclerosis it is vigabatrin vigabatrin and eclampsia the drug of choice will be magnesium sulfate MgSO4 Okay, so please pause the video and try to learn the drug of choices. Coming to status epilepticus, 
what we start in the beginning as the drug of choice is either lorazepam or diazepam we will start so even after giving this the seizures are not controlled then we go for levetir acetam or phenytoin or we go for valproid still not control any of these three then go for phenobarbital and still not control the last resort will be general anesthesia it is either by midazolam or propofol this is how we manage status epilepticus but the drug of choice will be lorazepam initial drug of choice so coming back the drug of choice for hips are with me is ACTH and with that we have done with fantastic 5 MCQs any doubt you can ask me in the comment section you can like the video share and subscribe to the channel thank you